Mike is our youngest. He's 12. Um, this last year, Mike was just getting a lot of bullying at school. And mm. uh, due to shame and his own struggle with, man, I'm not strong enough. And it was a group of kids, mm. playground kind of stuff, really coming against him and just being absolutely hateful. And we've seen the theme of hate against Micah has been mm. extreme, just extreme. And and so, you know, at one point, being a, a 11, 12-year-old, you know, he hauls off, punches the, one of the kids in the face and ends up getting some significant trouble. Uh, end up having to go to school a couple rounds in the second round. He didn't even want to go to school. Like I'm, we're sitting in the parking lot at the school and, Dad, I just, I hurt. I don't want to go back. Mm. I just, and I said, well, hey, buddy, you know, yeah, as a dad, you try and encourage and, and equip and be strong for him. And, you know, we end up going home. And, and um, I remember I got out of the truck and he just wanted to sit there. And, and he, Gloria went back out a few minutes later, I guess. He's just weeping. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Thank you, Fernando Ortega, for your beautiful rendition of Give Me Jesus. Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in part two of a series that we're doing on Jesus stories. I want to read from Hebrews 1 this week. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. But now, in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son, through Jesus. And then in Colossians chapter 1, Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. I love that. So, welcome back, listeners. With me this week, Stacy here in the studio, and our dear friends, Greg and Gloria Winters. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Greg is a Finnish carpenter and... Goodness, fill in the blank. Yeah. I don't know. Man Jack of, many... of all trades of some sort. So work in construction. Yeah. Counseling background. Yeah, exactly. Went through the same counseling degree that I did. Yeah. And works with a lot of guys. Gloria is a doctor of physical therapy and has been an enormous help to us. Yes, personally. <laughs> over the years. And both of them are on our prayer team. Um, but more important that have been friends for a long, long time. And you have three boys, ages Almost 13 and then 14, 15. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How so did do that the happen? math on that one. Wow, guys. Yeah. So driver Zed? Oh, driver we're in it. Well passed. Well passed. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I remember. With mom banking the majority of those hours. Gloria, I don't see any gray hairs. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> They're all with dad. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. And you guys have lived in Colorado Springs for how many years? 21 years. Yeah. Since we, just right after we got married. Wow. We moved Long from time. Los Angeles, thank you, Jesus, to <laughs> Colorado Springs. Yeah, right. Because you grew up in Southeast Alaska. Correct, yeah. And you grew up in Kansas. Right. So how does a Kansas boy meet a... Juno girl. Not in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> Not in Juno. It happens in Colorado only. Yeah. <laughs> Something about mail order brides, but uh, that's another story. Yeah. Okay. That's an, for another day. <laughs> for another day. Um, we're going to tell a couple stories on you before we get going. This, um, listeners, if you're just kind of jumping in, uh, this is, I said, part two of a series on Jesus stories. And I just, it's just been on my heart like, we need to get our eyes back on Jesus and um, just so much news, so much heartbreak in the world, just so much coming at everybody. And now that, you know, in many places, not in every place, we're coming out of lockdown, people are sort of stomping on the accelerator and work is asking more and schools are asking more. And we like, it's almost like people are trying to catch up 
Uh, and I'm like, time out, time out. Let's just talk about Jesus. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did last week with Becky and Tamara uh, from our prayer team and this week with Greg and Gloria. But before we jump into those, I have a Jesus story that I don't know if you remember, Greg. A couple of years ago, randomly, very randomly, I get a text one evening that says, hey, praying for you, got a sense that Jesus wants to do something with mother. Mm. Right. That's it. That, <laughs> that's, the, that's the joy bomb that shows up on my phone, you know, one <laughs> Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. And holy cow, the last two years in my journey with mother, in my story, you know, you kind of hang around the wild at heart world. We talk a lot about the father wound and that sort of thing, but I hadn't done personally enough work with mother in my life. Actually ends up being massive, maybe more significant than my alcoholic dad and, and mm. kind of that story. And so thank you for that. I don't know if I followed up with you. I, let- I don't know either. Of course, you sometimes get those leadings and you got to wonder if it's really me or what, but I love it. No, you just, oh, Jesus, come. Right. And so glad that he was able to use that one text. And continue, I mean, like continues to, that continues to be a rich hmm. realm of healing in, in the last few years. And I mentioned on an earlier podcast that I did a counseling intensive personally for, for myself, not as a therapist this uh, earlier this year, and there was so much healing around mother. So that's a Jesus mm-hmm. story that came through so good. you. Thank you. Yay for text and yay for taking the risk to follow up on the prompt of right. the Holy Spirit to do that, right? Yeah. And Gloria, you have done that with me so many times throughout the years. Not, not an incessant, not a constant thing, but in every now and again, I get a text from you that is, so timely and so perfect. And generally, it's a scripture, which I love. And I'm, here's one from September 14th. I don't even know what year it is. <laughs> but you sent, For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said this, In returning to me mm-hmm. and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confident trust is your strength. Mm-hmm. All I write back is, Yes, Lord, perfect timing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I have a little sense of remembering that moment where I just needed Jesus so desperately. And to hear your encouragement of it's in quietness and trust, Mm. it's in rest. So thank you. Mm. Thank you for that. Mm. Does that happen a lot for you? Is it scriptures? Is that kind of what tends to come? It's scriptures. It's pictures. Um, actually, and they're they're barraging me right now of the the different ones that have come over the years. It's impressions. Um, it's occasionally dreams, very occasionally. But and I ask for more of those. Um, one that comes to mind is ages ago, even before I, I knew John better than I actually knew you, Stacy. But I had um, two or three dreams in a row of you taking captivating to Australia. <laughs> And I thought, what the heck? Like, that's not, that wasn't an area that I was, um, I, I might have been on work crew, but I wasn't part of the intercessor team, or maybe it was even prior to that. I'd have to actually look back. Um, I think maybe well, it was We were on an prior. airplane to Washington for our son Blaine's wedding. So this is 2014 okay. that you're talking about. 2014. Yeah. So we were we were part of the ministry then, but, um, but I, I didn't have any, um, grounding for the fact that you would take Captivating to Australia. And so I called John. You were at the airport, and yes. I said, I need to tell Stacy something. I mean, when it comes three times in a row, you go, okay, Jesus, I get it. Yes. And he said, hey, Stacy, um, had a few dreams that um, someday uh, Captivating is going to Australia. And you said, great, thanks. Jumping on a plane. See you later. And, of course, you know, years later, here it comes into fruition. And I had nearly forgot about it until— you came and said, hey, we're going to Australia. Yeah, and you didn't know how long it had been a dream in my heart to go to Australia. No, no clue. So when you said it to me, it was like fireworks. Yes, God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, well, and then taking- what's, what's fun about that story is not only does Stace end up taking the team to Australia to do a phenomenal captivating event, but 
you end up being on that plane yep. <laughs> as part of that team. And you Yay. had no idea that that was coming. No idea. And actually, when that boomerang came of, of <laughs> oh, I'm going, oh, wait a second, this dream, you know, 2014 that came and the risk of going ahead and putting that out there and, uh, and letting that come into fruition. So much joy. Yes. It's just so much joy and playfulness and goodness and rescue and healing and encouragement in walking with Jesus yes. and, and letting Jesus in, letting him in to more of our lives. So before we jump into some storytelling beyond those stories, um, I want you guys, I want all of us to fill in the blank. Here's, here's the sentence. Over the past few years, my life with Jesus blank. And it could be anything, but what, what just, without editing, what just boop, pops up from the heart? Over the last few years, my life with Jesus has been close, hmm. like a skin. I think I said this to both of you in prior conversations that over the last couple years, and actually even this morning as I was doing my quiet time, it, it's felt like um, I was on the edge of a, a cliff, not in danger on the other side, but um, in, in the closeness. Like there was a finite movement either to one side or the other, and I didn't want actually to, to actually lean off to either side of that cliff edge. And both sides are a cliff um, because mm. he just said, be that close with me. Mm. Um, not knowing what was coming in the, in the, in the next couple years, which has significant story. But, and I kept saying, what, does that, what is that about? Of course, I want to be as close to you as I possibly can so that there's, there's freedom, but there's actually no, um, not room for error, but um, it, it's just so tight that you're walking with him. And, and that has really played out over the last couple of years to be crucial. Right. So not only was it an invitation, but it proved to be needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Greg, over the last few years, my relationship with Jesus, the person of Jesus in me, I'm thrust into a season where I'm engaged with a lot more people. And in the, the charge is to love well and love better. And it's, it's not a theory. It's not a rhetoric. It's not just kind of putting together some nice words here and there. It, it's, you know, when the friction comes and the dissension comes and problems arise, you know, workplace scenario stuff. I need, I need Jesus. I need the person of Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. And that restoration process I've been in for years of my own heart, and you recognize more of that volitional brokenness that arises when problems with relationships come. Mm -hmm. And just, no, no. I, I desperately need more of his work, his person through me to love well. Mm -hmm. And and that is just at the forefront of, of my days mm. uh, right now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, coming out of a lot of seclusion in the yeah. carpenter's shop mm -hmm. into the building industry and a company and people and people that don't know the love of Jesus and maybe are yes. walking with the love of Jesus. And yes. Wow. Yeah. Right. I really resonate with um, your word desperate, mm. Greg, because I would say that the last few years, my relationship with Jesus has deepened and expanded in beautiful ways that I am so thankful for. And it came out of a desperate need mm -hmm. of him and, um, mm. Just needing him, needing the more, needing him. Like that that verse, being very weary and laying at his feet, literally or figuratively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, being met by him because of my thirst, because of my desperation and encountering his love more deeply. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really good few years mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And super hard. In that super hard, so it's been a rescue because of him, because I've needed him desperately in every other aspect with the pain and the sorrows and the loss and um, the wounds of life. 
Yeah. I think now that we're sharing this, I, now I understand why Jesus wanted us to do this series. The people of God need Jesus now more than ever. The world needs Jesus now more than ever. So in telling stories, what we're hoping to do is encourage and inspire and, yep, maybe maybe make you a little, little Thirsty. jealous. Mm. Thirsty. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Provoke. To, yeah, yeah mm. to, to go, oh, wait a second. I Hungry. want that. I don't have that. I, I want mm-hmm. that. So I would say over the last couple of years, um, my relationship with Jesus has become wild <laughs> uh, and wonderful and everything like everything. And he's asked for everything. And there's a progression. You know, there's a, I I have entered the sage stage of the masculine journey. And, and there, there's a progression from the boy to the cowboy to the lover, warrior, king, you know, but in the last few years, it really has been everything. Yes. Yes. So let's tell some stories. Greg, you've got a story about your sons. Start with the Micah story. Micah's our youngest. He's 12 now. We are full tilt into the cowboy young manhood, young warrior stage in our household. So we're 12. With three. 14, 15. And so um, Micah's at the cusp of young men. He's still, still a lot of boy. And it's so good just to celebrate that boyhood still. But um, this last year... Mike was just getting a lot of bullying at school and mm. uh, due to shame and his own struggle with, man, I'm not strong enough. And it was a group of kids, mm. playground kind of stuff, really coming against him and just being absolutely hateful. And we've seen the theme of hate against Micah has been mm. extreme, just extreme. And, and so, you know, at one point being a, a 11, 12 year old, you know, he hauls off, punches the, one of the kids in the face and ends up getting some significant trouble. And the principal was a bit naive to what was going on. And it As just, were we. And we were too. We were a lot mm-hmm. in the dark. Of, oh. He wasn't seeing a lot. And he's got a strong internal world and expressing mm-hmm. himself is just, just a bit of a challenge right now. A and, strong internal world. It's, uh, oh, yeah. He is so private. Yes. So private. Of all three of your boys, oh, he's yes. so... He's like an there's introvert. a lot going on mm-hmm. oh, in yes. there, but I, I mean, when I'm when I'm with him, he is a very closed book. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I uh, end up having to go to school a couple rounds. In the second round, he didn't even want to go to school. Like I'm, we're sitting in the parking lot, the school, and Dad, I just I hurt. I don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. I just. And I said, well, hey, buddy, you know, yeah, as a dad, you try and encourage and, and equip and be strong for him and. You know, we end up going home and, and um, I remember I got out of the truck and he just wanted to sit there and, and he, Gloria went back out a few minutes later, I guess. He's just weeping oh. and, and just, just, just a struggle. And um, we, he, we missed a couple of days of school and he was kind of being the fall guy and um, in, as a dad, so wanting to just jump right into this and just fix it to yes. just, you know, get on the principal's call list and just go at it. Um, teachers, you know, like what's going on? He is becoming, and because and he's just being wrecked. And just hearing Jesus say, no, you pray. Pray, mm. intercede. And we had about three days there over a weekend and supposed to have a meeting with the principal on the Monday and a light switch just got turned on. And she calls me at the end of the day. The meeting got postponed. She goes, Let me, I need to do something first. And she met with all these boys oh. that were bullying my son. And it went from Micah getting a consequence of some suspension type scenarios to I'm now going to put him in a leadership <gasps> position. And he is now going to teach uh, something on leadership and good sportsmanship. Oh, uh, just a huge release for him. Wow. Recognizing being seen, being heard, because he was silent for so long about the bullying, feeling weak. Mm. Now I'm promoted to a place of strength. Mm. And 
in just that place of thank you, Jesus. It was Jesus. Yes. Totally God intervention. Yeah. It wasn't me going in there and probably really making things worse. It was just praying and, and asking God to move mm. on behalf of my son. Mm. And as I'm listening, I'm going, okay, it's a Jesus story, but who's it really for? <laughs> it's more for dad and mom. Oh. Practically, yeah. than, I mean, it's huge for Micah, but for a parent's heart, mm -hmm. you want to just throw down. Mm -hmm. You want to intervene. You want to call in the attorneys. I mean, right? Yeah. And for Jesus to say, hang on, I, I actually have this, but I do need you to pray. So start mm -hmm. praying, right? That's so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. How many parents so want Jesus to show up for their kids. Like, I'm just, wow. Oh, I'm just, every single one. Right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, whether your kids are 46 exactly. or 12, you know, just wanting Jesus to come for your kids. Yes. Yes. Was there something from mom's side on that? Oh, it's so much of a part of his story of not being seen and not being heard. And... Micah is extremely brilliant, mm. extremely brilliant, uh, um, unexplainably so. And so trying to allow him to come into a place where he has um, words and a voice and a scene has been challenging for him and has been a, a very specific attack from the enemy on his life. And so in these places where there's breakthrough mm where without um, trying to justify or push for him that, that Jesus ex opens that and exposes that is just, it's beauty. It's, it's holy. It's, um, and it's what we want to see over and over again in his life to come into what we've really seen as we've prayed about his mm. calling and his purpose and his glory and his book of life that's been written. Um, that's really where, uh, I, I wrestle internally because I so want to push that out by my own will. And so stepping back and calling it into being from what I know has been written for him before the beginning of time is hard. Mm -hmm. And yet yeah. it's so vital. And so when we've, uh, Greg's giving one story of more than one, <laughs> um, but it's, yeah. a, it's a summary of what Micah has experienced, including um, last week, same type of thing. And so we're really... More bullying or being seen? Both, right? So it's um, it's consistent things that have come against him at, at school and then uh, manifest at home in that same capacity. Mm. And so really walking with Jesus and speaking life into um, him and and allowing him to have um, a new place of, of voice. Mm. Mm. How old were your boys when you guys started getting into kind of this circle, this message, the... Hearing the voice of God, walking with Jesus. In utero for Micah, right? Yeah. So I think Blaine and Nate were um, born when, had already been born when Greg started no, doing. I was, I have a picture, infant, Blaine sitting on your lap when I left for my first boot camp. Right. So 15 yes. years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Blaine was sitting on Gloria's lap and. You had his hands up and uh, <laughs> I don't know, you were celebrating something, dad leaving, I don't know, he's going to get cleaned up, don't come yeah. back, great. Uh, so it's it's been a decade and a half That's awesome. plus. Yeah. That's so great. Craig got me in last minute to the first boot camp Aww. and then sat with me half the meals. And, Beautiful. And just probably helped me unpack. Oh, our on, buddy Craig. Start, mm -hmm. start touching things that needed to be touched and it was so good. Oh. Wow, I'm gonna tear up over that one. And speaking of Blaine, your yeah. oldest son. Oh goodness, and and that's what's so awesome is for both of us walking this message for pretty much all of our kids' life years and desire of the heart has been a, a theme that I think our boys are catching on that God has put desires there that are good that you need to go after. It's an adventure. It's life-giving. And Blaine Full Tilt has just, you know, gone down this path. And in, for one of the big things is climbing. It has been huge for him. 
um, rock climbing, mountain climbing, mountaineering, technical climbing, competitive technical climbing. Wow. And, and the thing is, where did this come from? Oh, goodness. He was born with it. He was born with it. He was born with it. The three-day-old was trying to pull his head up and push through his <laughs> legs. And and as, a, as understanding orthopedic uh, pediatrics, I said, this is not normal. This is not normal. And I said, Greg, look what this this newborn is trying to do. It, he was born with it. Yes. Bailing out of his crib before he's one years old. Oh, yeah. I, Clim- I climb- can bust out of this thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> climbing 10-foot ladders. Oh, uh, my goodness. And I find him at the top, and he's only crawling yet. Yeah. Again, no gray hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, what the, what the? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'll take that. Yeah, uh, so got a good climbing buddy and his dad. They were Yosemite trip. COVID bumps it one round. They're going to do, you know, half a week of climbing. And so it's the second round. They're, hey, I think it's on. And they go, uh, you know, then it's all the fires last fall in, in California. Oh, and yes. you know, they get there and it's just socked in Ugh. with smoke. You, you know, he sent me back a picture and then you can barely see El Capitan or no, anything. Goodness. They're just socked in. So the next morning, Blaine's pl- praying. And he goes, God, can can we have a clear day. Can we get the smoke to get moved out? And he also says, I'd, I'd love to see like a famous climber and maybe get a chance to talk to him. And so sure enough, they arrive that morning back to Yosemite. Clear day. Oh my goodness. He's, he's beautiful. And they do some YouTube channel stuff. And so they're like, you know, it's about filming too. Get the, get the epic adventure in. And they go on this, they're going to do a couple rungs of El Capitan. Blaine Eldridge has been a huge part of training up my son, Blaine, in this area and just doing traditional climbing now. I mean, goodness sakes, my son's just 15 and he's doing traditional climbing and lead, lead climbing. Wow. But sure enough, uh, who, who pulls up next to him and climbs the first two rungs with him? But Tommy Caldwell. Uh, and... Um, Super famous climber, but probably the one guy my son follows in the climbing realm. Oh my goodness! Got a poster of him on his room, you know, kind of thing, and Come and on. and he so him on the rock, and oh not my goodness. right next to each other. Okay, so what? pause, listeners. I know, I know. There's like eight people who understand who Tommy Caldwell is. It's a, <laughs> it's a big deal. It's like Shaquille O'Neal. You know, yeah, it, it, it's absolutely. A, it's a big, big deal. He's got a documentary called The Dawn Wall. Yeah. On El Cap. Yeah. That's um, Netflix, folks, if you want to watch it, really, really great climbing movie. But it also reveals what kind of a guy he is. He's just a really good guy. Yes. And so they have, you know, some fun interaction <laughs> with Tommy and another well-known climber. And uh, total gift, total joy bomb for my son and his buddy. Wow. And and then Blaine gets it. He understood this was God mm-hmm. orchestrated, mm. God coming for my heart you know, in Yosemite, you know, kind of a climbing mecca, mecca for North America and beautiful setting. God clears out the smoke and then he drops in, hey, I got a visitor for Look you today too. Look what he too. did. Look what Jesus oh, did. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It was beautiful. Mm. And, and are for my son to receive that, as a parent, you just go, oh, at this age. He is leaps above where I was oh. to see your goodness, mm. to see how you want to give good things. Yes. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah. And that the desires of your heart matter and matter to God. Yes. That's yeah. a killer story. It is. Tommy Caldwell shows up <laughs> on the route next Say to him. What? And then they start talking. And, oh. they, and yeah. they just happened to be. So the, the boys had gone up. Um, and we're at a little bit of a landing area when Tommy and I think it's Blair Williams came up yes. um, next to them. And so they were actually at a point where they could, they would stop and then do the next route. And so it, it, you could, I mean, they could have climbed up past them at a different place and they would have never seen them. Yes. So it just happened to be at this landing point where they could yeah. um, stop and talk and shoot the breeze a little bit. And then up they went and just, mm. just miraculous. Yeah. Mm. It was wonderful. Mm. I love the connection to desire. A few years ago, I think it was 2018, and this was prior to hip surgery, so I could still, I was limping, but I could walk, and I got a trip to this coast of Oregon, the southern coast, oh, yeah. by myself, just to have time with God. And um, 
the whales migrate there, though. It was it was nearing the end of the season, and yes. I love whales. I have a thing for whales. And so I was there for a week asking God for a whale. Can I please, please, please have a whale? I love whales. You know I love whales. <laughs> I know you love me. Can I please have a whale? And um, so part of it is asking, right? right These gifts right. come in the asking. And I didn't get a whale. And there was no whale. And it's the last day, and I'm I'm walking on the beach, and I finally sit down. And just I'm my heart is exploding with love for him after all of this time. And I said, it's okay. I don't, I don't need a whale. I love you way more than whales. <laughs> Cue whale. <laughs> of course. Yes. Of course. I just, just a complete release. I, I mean, you could have done it anytime. You saw a whale. Right then. I said, I, I love you way more than a whale. And then shh, a, a whale breaches, you know, directly in front of me. This whale just shoots up out of the ocean. Yeah. And so I am alone on the beach, sitting on driftwood, laughing right. my head yeah. off. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. That was really, really wonderful. Asking and then releasing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a similar thing happen a couple of years ago. We love to look for antlers, elk and, and mm. mule deer antlers that are dropped every year. Uh, they grow a new pair each year. Um, and so those big majestic antlers, sometimes, sometimes, not very often, you can find them out when you're hiking and, and stuff in the spring. And what had happened was in this place that we hike quite a bit, one of our son's pals had found this spectacular elk shed, this elk antler, six-point elk. But I mean, it's like massive. It's yeah. it's just a trophy. It's gorgeous. And I know they usually drop them within a couple hundred yards of each other, right? So I'm like, oh, you only found one? I'm going back. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. And so I go back and I go back and I go back and I can't find it. And I'm literally doing like a little circumference, you know, do You're a circle, do a litter, the land. bigger uh-huh. circle. But then it was the same thing. Then I realized I am obsessing. And it was one of those, if you love me, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, mm-hmm. if you, yeah, if you oh, love me, I'll yeah. find this antler kind of thing. And it was getting very pouty. <laughs> um, and then it was the shift of heart. But I just went, what am I thinking? I love you. You love me, God. I don't need mm. this. I literally turn around to take a different route out of the woods. And there was the other matching antler lying under. Of after the release, after the yes. insistence, mm-hmm. after the pouting and the obsession for a few days and all that. Yeah. It's so funny how he does that. I mean, that brings so many stories to mind. But as probably many of the listeners will realize, you know, Stacy talked about early on in her captivating uh, book about uh, finding heart rocks and asking Jesus for heart rocks. And so, of course, early on I said, well, I, I want heart rocks. And if, if, she, if she can have some, I want some heart rocks. So I remember the first heart rock. <laughs> Greg and I were on our, um, we're, we're 21 years now into marriage, but this was our seventh anniversary trip out to the San Juan Islands outside of Washington. And we were on the beach and I was just saying, Jesus, I, I, I want that heart rock. And so I look down, pick up a rock and I look at it and I go, eh, and like kind of, but not really. So I just am walking and just, I still held it in my hand and he says, flip it over. I flip it over, and it is the most perfect heart rock you've ever seen. (laughs) But you had to look at it from the other side. And it just cracks me up because now I have hundreds of perfect heart rocks. And oftentimes I'll see one. I'm like, nah, not good enough. Like, I I want one that's really a heart rock. And he'll be like, pick it up. (laughs) Turn it over. And and then there it is. And so it's just that it's that asking, but then releasing and hearing his voice. It's the life is a prize. When, when we just that place of surrender of no, no matter what, heart rock or no heart rock, antler or no antler, whale, whale or, or no, no whale, whale, whale <laughs> or no whale, I, I just want you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. And, and then he drops it in. He yeah. brings life and that mm. prize. It's mm. all the more precious mm. when it comes. Mm. So good when we can get there. So, Gloria, when I was asking you, if you guys would come in and just share with us some stories. You mentioned a story of a friend that you lost and going back to Juno and Jesus coming in ways for you there. Can you tell us that? Yeah, and it, it's um, Jesus was asking me to share this, and it's not an easy story to share, but um, 
but here it is. So I, I did grow up in Alaska. Um, we moved there when I was very young, and we actually lived with um, another family, and they had four boys. I have two brothers and a twin sister, actually. And so we actually lived with them for quite some time and then bought the house next door. So they were a family that we grew up with. Um, they are family. Their boys were my brothers. And we did everything in the outdoors. That If you didn't um, play hard, you didn't get to play at all. Um, and so that was part of my upbringing. Well, two years ago, the oldest um, boy, Billy Dean, who was a Special Forces Ranger, um, Delta Force, Tower of Power, uh, elite soldier, who actually was named as one of the um, top five Americans to defeat ISIS. He was just recently retired and was starting a mountaineering company, and he was actually on the backside of Mount Rainier, and they were actually camping at base camp. So they had made it up three quarters of the way, and the next morning they were going to ascend. And a rock fell from the top of the mountain and landed on his tent and oh. killed him. There were other campers there that were not part of their group that didn't have the rock hit them. This one rock fell on top of his tent. Um, his climbing partner that was with him was severely injured but made it out through a helicopter. So it was um, just the most unexpected, devastating. tragic, devastating thing. And, and he was a brother. So the, the, the death that comes with that, um, the pain, the sorrow, is soul-killing. And even in those first couple of days, um, Greg was Jesus to me. And he said, Gloria, I just remember so clearly, it was within the first 24 hours, he said, you will never be able to reconcile death. It was not meant to be. Um, eternity was written in our hearts, and so death will never find a place. It will never make sense. And he said... If you need to go to Alaska now, go. And the, the memorial service was not going to be for another seven to ten days because um, all of these um, soldiers were going to fly in to be part of it mm. from all over the world. Mm. And he said, just go. And so I went up and rented a mountain bike um, and biked every single day, hiked every single day, just went to all of our old spots that we used to adventure in. And um, when, when Billy would come into town, back to Alaska, first thing he would do was grab his stuff and go to the mountains. That's just who he was. Uh -huh. And so if you didn't grab your stuff and go to the mountains, you, you might not actually see him. <laughs> and so I would just grab my stuff and go to the mountains with him. Mm. And so that's what I did. I just grabbed my stuff and went to the mountains. And I just, um, Alaska do you know, it's just, it's just beauty. And it just, the silence, the abundance, the wildlife just was able to fill me in places of, and begin the healing process. And um, John, you speak about in your book, uh, Get Your Life Back, just how beauty is the antidote for death and sorrow. Yeah. And that place of just having space of time to do that was a gift from Jesus. Mm there's still more healing to come and the pain is is still there that that doesn't go away when the anniversary of his death is coming up this month mm. and his birthday is the following month. Oh my goodness. Mm. And so um, there is the absence and there is the loss there. But um, because it was married with beauty so quickly, it filled that sorrow in such a beautiful way. Mm. And that was Jesus's gift. Yeah. to catch your heart mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. You needed some encouragement to go, permission to go. Permission. Right? And that was Jesus coming through Greg to say, go. Yeah, because of the requirements of life. Yeah. Um, you know, three boys. I had meetings and travel plans all booked around. And, of course, you're going to take time for the memorial, but, but to actually take extra time alone with Jesus mm -hmm. in the outdoors, which is mm. my love language is the mm. outdoors and mm. um, activity, exercise, movement. And so mm. to, like for him to combine all of my favorite things, and, mm. and then Greg came up for the memorial as well. And so for him to be there and present and to mm. experience the beauty of Alaska with me in that, um, it was just dropped it into the right place. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing that story. That was vulnerable, and I know it's still fresh and hard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is still fresh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, keep coming. Yes. Jesus, keep coming. Friends, we're only in part two, and I know, I know, this is stirring 
all kinds of things. Things for your kids, as Greg and Gloria were telling stories about their boys and things in your marriage and and not being married and and losses now we're talking about. I know, I know. And and stay with us because over the weeks, um, Jesus will meet you through this series. Jesus will open up new opportunities. And And I would say, if you used to have this with Jesus and and it's kind of grown a little dim, like seek it again. And if this is brand new, like this is available. This this is meant to be our experience with God. And friends, if I could just make a suggestion, something that really helped me get to know Jesus better, fall in love with him again, was reading the book Beautiful Outlaw. It really pulls back the curtain on on who he is. So get that. In fact, I have a little note from somebody who read Beautiful Outlaw, and this is something that they wrote in. I'd love to read this. Yeah, go ahead. I sensed this longtime invitation to encounter a Jesus other than the Sunday school preacher's daughter, holiness, denominational version I had been trying to appease. I have failed at knowing him or wanting him to know me. Oh, my goodness, what a joy to get a clearer picture, to consider things differently than I'd been taught, and then just religiously believed. As John described Jesus, his qualities, the snapshots of him through Scripture, his brilliance, never overbearing, he is the playfulness of creation, the generosity of the ocean and the ferocity of a thunderstorm— reclining at a meal, laughing with friends, then going to the cross, beautiful, love as strong as death. Now, having learned so much through the book, I see it. I get it in a way I only hoped to as I began the book. And not only do I see it, I now recognize the lifetime of encounters, even my earliest memories as a child. So many ways Jesus has invited me and loved me and surrounded me, and I was still trying to perform and do right and be holy and letting the accuser convince me that I would never be able to please Jesus. I love him so much more now. I am loving this new, lighter, brighter, lovelier relationship with Jesus. That is so beautiful. And to to close us out, I would just love to pray, to pray for all of you listening. Mm -hmm. Pray along with me, friends. Jesus, help me to see you. Help me to see you as you really are. Just as we began with the song, Give Me Jesus, Lord, you are who we really need. And we really need the true you. So would you please reveal yourself to us more deeply as you truly are? Because when you do, we love you with our whole heart. Mm. In your name, we pray. Amen. 